Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number four zero. Is that right? Yeah, four zero. That's right. Can't make Roman numerals with your hands, but you know. Four, I gave up on that a while ago. Four zero. Whatever. Is there a zero in, in, in Roman numerals? There is not. <laughs> That's a good question. No, there is not. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, we got lots of great stuff to talk about. If you've got a technical question for George or I, throw it in the chat room right now before or, or forever hold your peace, and we'll get to it in just a little bit. But we got lots to talk about tonight about some microphones and interfaces and a couple of interesting conversations about do you have a production studio or do you have a voiceover studio or whatever, right? That's right. All right. What does it mean to be a voiceover in 2020 20. and especially beyond post COVID? Yes. All right. All that coming up right now on voiceover body shop tech talk from the outer reaches. They came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the VO universe. They bring it to you now, George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Greetings, everybody out there in voiceover land. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Tech. Talk. Talk. Tech. Talk. Tech. Talk. Yeah, people love Tech Talk. There's just something about it. You guys tune in, you listen, you ask great questions, and you can ask us questions before the show. You can write to us at theguys at vobs.tv, and we can, uh, you know, Sue's now trying to get the, there it is right there, theguys at vobs.tv. All right. No, that's the guys at vobs.com. It's yeah. vobs.tv. Yeah, you might want to fix that. We'll throw that on there again. You can write to VOBS.com, but God only knows where that's going to go. I don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway, even though it may not seem like it sometimes, George and I are the experts on home voiceover studios. Uh, and uh, if, if, if you don't really understand what it's about, now you come in here every week and you listen in and you're like, boy, the guys, these guys really know what they're talking about. Because you could throw us any question, and George and I could riff on it for hours and have. Uh, so, but the thing is, is a voiceover studio, a home voiceover studio, is a very unique environment to you. Every voice is different. Every room is different. And I keep trying to get this across to people that, you know, you could read, well, this is a great mic, or this is that. Your voice is very, very different, and every room is very, very different, and how you sound the way, how do you make it sound the way it's supposed to sound requires the knowledge and the ears of those of us that know what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. And if you want to work with people who actually know it, 
here's two. And because we've probably built more home voiceover studios than anybody. Like, how many do you think you've built, George? Built or consulted on? Both. I, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's way north of a, than a thousand. Wow. At this point. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and this year, I mean, I've been, I've been really busy because everybody's got to have a home studio. It's you, right. the thing is, is when you've been doing this a long time, while you may have been an expert to start with, because we had done so many, we've seen it all. We've seen every situation. We hear everything. We know, you know, if you're under a shelf, if you're in a pillow fort, if you're in a large bathroom, we can generally tell after listening to it after about five seconds. And we generally know how to fix it. But we have to hear your individual studio and get it sounding the way it's supposed to sound. So you sound like you. The idea is not to sound great, whatever that means. The idea is to sound like you. And if you're a good voice actor, you should already sound great. So if you want to work right, if you want to work with a great pro that knows what they're talking about, you could talk with George and you find him at George the dot tech. All my tech support stuff is there. There's a maybe a little bewildering number of options. So of course you can always call the answering service or leave a message or write us a con you know, contact us and we'll help direct you. But there's things you can schedule, one on ones, you can send files and we'll send things back like, you know, a sound check. Yeah. And Dan does sound checks, but he gave him a different name. Yeah, I have um, a, yeah, I I've got my specimen collection cup over yes. at uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com, which you'll see right there. Homevoiceoverstudio.com, you scroll to the bottom of the page. The specimen collection cup is there. Click on that. It's a Dropbox. Okay, it's a humorous Dropbox, but I will listen to your audio and I will give you a thorough analysis of what I'm hearing. Does it need adjusting? Does it sound fabulous? You know, I'm doing a couple of those a day, and anybody that's gotten one from me knows that I'm very thorough in uh, in my analysis. And if you need a lot more help, if you really are starting from zero, I love getting people up and running. And it's always fun after an hour and a half of just teaching people the basics of what they need. They go, oh, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I just had to sound like me. And that's not that hard. So check us out uh, and work with us because that's why we're here. And that's why we bring you the show every week to remind you that we're here. Anyway, in your tech update this week, you got some cool stuff about microphones and other stuff. So some relevant, take some it away. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, first of all, let's talk about, let me just move some things around here because I think there's a more logical way to mention all this stuff. Okay. Let's start with just talking about some new gear. Go for it. And uh, we'll fly in pictures of these things later for people because there's well, a lot we'll, of visuals. We'll fix here, it in so. post, yeah. Fix it in post. Uh, but, um, well, for one thing, there is another new Universal Audio Apollo. And this another? one's called the Solo. Ah. This one replaces the Arrow. And based on what I've seen, the real difference is that it comes now in silver, not the charcoal gray, space gray, whatever. So they've gone back to the old color because it's the new color. <laughs> and As opposed to and the they color. have a, uh, what they decided to do is to make a USB edition ah, it, not as just well as the Thunderbolt 3 uh, version. So they're really, they really are trying to come up with good solutions for windows users um waiting hoping that their sound drivers are getting better with time um but there is a usb version and the usb version has to be plugged in with power to power it properly whereas the thunderbolt version you get a lot of current a lot of power comes through a thunderbolt cable so that runs right off the cable so otherwise they're pretty much the same as the old arrow just now that there's one that works with Windows. So the good news is that if you are in in the market for an Apollo and you want the least expensive but still modern version, you can grab an Arrow now. I I've, I've seen it I believe for around $420 range instead of the usual 500, so that's become cheaper. That's a nice thing. Um a few new pieces of gear, there's a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to kind of move through this relatively quickly cuz a lot of these things I haven't well, actually, all of these things I'm going to mention, I haven't seen yet in person. Some of them are coming soon. 
Some of them are already on the market, but just things I found that looked kind of interesting. Aston micro Aston microphones, Aston microphones. They've come out with some interesting designs. Their industrial design is unique. Um, but what they've come out with now is beyond just industrial industrial design. What they've come up with is what they're calling their element. That's the model active moving coil microphone. <laughs> so it's Sounds like a dynamic mic. <laughs> it's a dynamic mic, but it's active, meaning it has a preamp and needs phantom power. And the, what they're saying is that it's sort of the what they consider the best of all worlds, the best of a dynamic mic, a condenser mic, and essentially a ribbon mic in one mic for 200 bucks. <laughs> Who knows if this is going to be the next amazing thing that everybody has to have. Or if it's just another decent sounding mic in at a decent price point, we don't know. But it's just unique. It's interesting, unique uh, industrial design as they always do, and we'll see. It's it's kind of early to tell. I don't usually talk about things that aren't out yet, but yeah, what the heck? I thought it'd be fun to tease a few things. Can't wait to try. Um, yeah, me too. Personas's new audio box. Now, I'm not one that's been really big on the Personas audio box series. I think I had a bad taste in my mouth from the older generations of products being noisy and things, but they seem to have figured that out now with the 96 series stuff, the high resolution. And so they have a new one, their 25th anniversary um, audio box 96. It's only 99 bucks. And I think it's the cheapest, what I consider decent interface that has a mix knob. Why does that matter? If you look at the other things in that price point, the Scarlet Solo, and others, even the Scarlet 2i2, II II, um, which is quite a bit more expensive, those don't have a mix knob for monitoring. Um, and so if you're doing a lot of directed sessions, which we are these days on Zoom and Skype and Source Connect, on and on, it's really nice to be able to just kind of quickly adjust the blend between yourself and the other side. And normally with those other devices, you only have an on-off switch for monitoring. And now you, with the mix control, you can control it for $99, I don't know too many others out there of a good quality that have that feature. So that's kind of cool. We'll yeah. see how that turns out. Dan, have you had good experiences with any Personas audio boxes? Uh, I had the old Firewire edition. Oh, yeah. Which I remember plugging in once wrong or something and smoke started to come out of it. Those, those Firewire jacks, <laughs> if, you were, if you were working quickly and not paying close enough, you could shove them in upside down. It was actually possible. Yeah. It was disastrous. And I'm like, well, that's, that's fried. And then uh, so I, I, I went out and got something else. And then uh, I, I took it off the shelf once and plugged it into a Firewire port that I had on, a, on, a, on another computer. Son of a gun, it was still alive. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I guess this is why it's called Firewire. It yeah. must be. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah. it didn't start a fire, but, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, I used it for a while. Um, it was okay. You know, I generally find that if it's got a good preamp and it all, you know, the, the analog to digital converters in these guys are all pretty much the same. And there's, there's, you're not, there's not going to be a loss of quality. The only, the real quality in these units is what's in the preamp and their preamps were Okay. Yeah, Personas has been making preamps for a really long time, and at those price points, the sound, uh, the AD converters and preamp chips that are in those things are only produced by a couple of companies, so it's probably going to sound very similar to what else is in the same price range. Yeah. Now, I just noticed that there's a whole lot of color features happening these days. Not that it's anything new to have or, like or a special edition. Or important to voiceover, yeah. Right, <laughs> but I just thought it was funny that there's an Audio-Technica AT2020V which is a chrome-plated 2020. It's a shiny, shiny AT2020. And yes, there is also the USB version. So for $200, you can buy a chrome-plated USB 2020 plus uh, microphone. And yet, it's still only 16-bit recording. So I know that doesn't matter for many people's voiceover work, like audiobooks, but if you're doing anything for games, I know games are really sticklers about 24 bit, so ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, and yeah, game now, people don't want USB mics anyway. Right so. now, now the AT2020 is not a true large diaphragm condenser mic. It's more it's like a, an, it's an electric yeah, condenser mic essentially. Smallish condenser, not large. Yes, 
got to look inside the grill. You'll see there's a little a little round disc mm. inside, not <laughs> what you would think of as large. So, but it's one that sometimes surprises me how good it can sound. Not always, but sometimes if you use it right. Yeah, um, the Audio Technica ATH M50X, which was one of the one of my favorite headphones, is a PB version, the purple black edition. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in this like awesome to me awesome metallic purple finish and if anybody knows me i have at least two different bikes maybe three at this point that have lots of purple parts so that made me a little bit too excited and then embarrassed when i thought i was making fun of the chrome mic but i want to get purple headphones <laughs> but anyway you can get them in purple now i've seen those things in maroon or uh, bl- uh red red and gold actually a uh, blue black, white, they come in a lot of colors now. Um, I, it's probably because we're all on camera a lot more now, and headphones are becoming more of a fashion statement, so I guess that's what's going on there. Um, and taking the color thing to the logical conclusion, the extreme, Manly has, a, uh, of all things you would never think of getting in crazy colors, a, their massive passive stereo 2BQ. <laughs> This is a $6,000 piece of equipment. Clearly only going to be used by mastering engineers, very high-end studios. It's done in what they call the Pride Edition. Um, And every strip, if you can imagine a whole bunch of rows, well, you don't have to imagine because we'll have a picture of it, is in a different rainbow color. So the whole unit across the front (laughs) is a rainbow. Um, I believe Ivana Manley is herself in the LGBT community so that makes a lot of sense um but um pretty cool just it's neat to see that happening i mean for her that's a brave thing to do to, to try to sell something that's of that price point it's not a hundred dollar mic really it's a six thousand dollar piece of equipment yeah and to give it that that splash of color it's it's pretty bold pretty do you, cool do you think that might be perhaps a and uh something that has led from the the pandemic and the fact that we've got a lot of artists who are doing their stuff, as you were saying, we have a lot of people who are on camera, but we're seeing a lot of singers do stuff on camera, you know, using their microphones badly, but the microphone will look right <laughs> while it's on there. I think so. I think Audio Technica, the, the, the timing of that release is, you know, no coincidence. You know, the last six months we've been seeing tons and tons of artists' equipment and microphones on camera in a way we never did before. Um, and so Ivana's like, hey, this is something I can do. I don't know the background on it. I don't know if there's any charity involved. I really don't know. But she's obviously saying, hey, um, if you have this in your studio, it shows you support of the LGBTQ. Uh, does T belong in there? Yes, T, Q, um, community. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Now, now um, this, this next thing, this is something you and I talk about all the time. Oh, man, this yeah. is really a very big topic. It shouldn't yeah. even be here, but I'll bring it up <laughs> anyway. It's because it's just a whole other discussion, really. But, you know, we, Dan, you're not, a, you're not an acoustician. You didn't go to college and get a master's in acoustics and learn the math of acoustics, right? I was told there would be no math. Yeah. <laughs> same, kind, same here. <laughs> I'm, an, uh, I'm an engineering, Virginia Tech engineering department dropout, okay? <laughs> I have a music degree. So I've always, when I'm doing studios, it's always been done by, first of all, ear. Second of all, lots and lots of of experience, research, experimentation, et cetera. But there are other other ways to go, you know, and there are acousticians who have uh, either through studying, getting degrees, whatever the case, have learned the math, have, have, are using the numbers, using the math to crunch the numbers and figure out mathematically what is the best thing to do in your studio? It's two different approaches. And it doesn't mean that they're both not valid. And But I've just been experimenting with working with uh, an engineer, uh, an acoustician recently. And I realized that, you know, we, I had the client on the phone and him and the uh, acoustician. And I was acting as sort of the translator. Because it was so over the head of, of the, the actor whose studio we're designing and you know the other end, the uh, the guy that knows the numbers and knows his stuff, that it was just kind of like adding this huge m- new set of variables to a project, and I was loving it. I mean, I was soaking it up like a sponge. I'm going, whoa, that's pretty amazing. And 
cool and everything. But at the end of the day, you have to decide how far you want to go in that direction because it can end up invest. You can end up investing a lot more time and possibly money in going that route. I guess the good thing about it, though, is that when you work with an acoustician, they have the numbers to sort of back up their claims. You know, and if they have the right models and the right math, chances are they'll be able to at least tell you what to expect in terms of the performance. And I'm talking mainly about soundproofing, that magic STC. So um, that might be valuable to you if you're doing bigger top money projects. If you're working in your own home in a small studio, you may not need to go that route. But just so you know, if you want something that's more than just taking Dan and my word that we think that this solution is going to work for you, <laughs> there are people out there that do know the math. Right. And uh, let me know if you ever want to talk to one. I can refer you. Yeah, but is that necessary in your closet? You know, I mean, generally, I mean, you and I will walk into a closet or walk into a booth and we know what it's supposed to sound like around the mic because that's how we position ourselves and it's one mic and we'll hear a yeah, node in one spot right and and you record it people send us samples we're like are you under a shelf uh it's one of my favorites uh yeah. you know th those sorts of things i think for knowing the way it's supposed to sound i would always go by my ear and and you know me i'll go into somebody's house and i literally as i say i gotta sniff around you go, okay, where, where is the node here? Okay. Where is the sweet spot? Because it, like I say, every room's different and it's like, okay, where's your mic position? Perhaps we need to move it a little bit over here. Now it may be calculations. Our brains are doing those calculations, all this algebra mm -hmm. and, and stuff. Actually, it's probably more, what's the other stuff? Uh, I don't know, what's the last math class I took at college and failed out? Differential equations? Yeah, it, our <laughs> our brains are doing that. I mean, I mean, it's sight, hearing, and it's doing all these calculations. We just don't know it. So, but we know what it's mm -hmm. supposed to sound like, and it's mm -hmm. like maybe it's you know maybe you know you're getting too much of a comb filter over here or something like mm -hmm. that. If you know what those things are, you know how to adjust for them. So. But if the guys yep. want to do the math, they can do the math. Yeah, exactly. There's people that know how to do that stuff. They're called acousticians. That's right. Um, the uh, Another thing I was going to mention is the use case for remote-controlled mic preamp. Ah. What the heck is that? Is that something well, you I control mean, from really, your app? <laughs> yeah. That's really any interface, really, at this point, that has software that works alongside it that also allows you to adjust the game. There's a few out there that don't have that capability like the audience series they've decided to and it, for a good reason they decided to put a lot of money and energy engineering into their gain pot the gain knob and it's a physical control others and we mentioned the apollo earlier and also i think the rme brand of things like the baby face uh they have a few others that are really expensive um they allow you to adjust the gain from your screen and there's the actually you know what? I almost forgot the most obvious one of all: the Apollo, uh, the um, Apogee. The Apogee, right? They've got the Maestro software. The Apogee right. One. Right. Not a big fan of the software all the time, but I will say, being able to set your preamp to a precise number, forty-three, twenty-seven, Hi. whatever it is, <laughs> it's kind of handy. It makes it very easy to go back and repeat a setting when you have to pick up a job, or if you know you're doing a game. You can type that number in, boom, set the gain, walk into your studio, and you know what it's going to be. It's repeatable. And beyond that, if you happen to have a control surface in your in your booth, whether it be an iPad remote controlling your computer or if you have a keyboard and mouse, you can now control that from inside the booth. And the most important thing, and we did talk about this last time, you're not extending very expensive Thunderbolt cables, which is extremely expensive to extend, or sometimes very unreliably able to extend USB. You don't want to extend USB if you can avoid it. It's very unreliable. Yep. But you can extend your microphone cable and your headphone cable, no problem. So now you can adjust your gain as needed from your booth, and you're controlling it remotely, essentially. So there's a case. Even if you're not going to use all the plugins, use all the bells and whistles, when the Apollo Arrow now is getting into a more reasonable ballpark price range 
it might not be a bad idea. And lastly, if you're going to be trained on using certain tools and software and you go through a training course to learn these tools, don't assume that because you learned to use them and you were given the tools to use, it means that you must use them. It doesn't work that way. Because you buy a set of tools and one of them happens to be an impact wrench, it doesn't mean you need to use the impact wrench on every project. You know, the thing at the like that a you hear house, when you get your tires you know? changed, <laughs> you don't go into your bathroom and install a soap dish with an impact wrench. So, folks, when you learn these tools, it's great. It's nice to have some knowledge. It's nice to have the tools when you need them, but it's very important if you don't learn when to use them, you may end up using them all the time when you don't need to be or even shouldn't be and actually making the audio come out worse. So please be very selective about when you use them. And if you've learned how to use them and didn't learn when to use them, ask the person who trained you what's appropriate, how to learn to how to use or when to use the tools. That's probably one of those things that just comes with experience. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So I mean, be careful. Don't don't overuse processing. Don't overuse RX. Don't overuse those tools. They can accumulatively add on layers and layers of sludge to the audio. And before <laughs> you know it, it doesn't sound so good when it's all done. Yeah. Keep it clean. Keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, I think there's way too much discussion out there about look what I can do with my audio. Great. Who cares? Most engineers don't want you futzing with it. Get yeah. it right up front. That's what George and I do. We help you get it right up front Maybe yeah so i mean it kind of do dovetails into a little bit of a discussion i mean because well we've already been dis discussing it and that is this is a reality that we're in now of your owning a voiceover production studio you're not just an actor with a booth anymore you're oftentimes taking control of the audio from microphone to delivery to what goes to the client, to what even ends up on YouTube, television, whatever. And as a result of having to learn all that, it can be overwhelming. <laughs> I worked with a client last week who was getting some really good training on some very, very complicated software. And it was overwhelming um, in terms of complexity. And, you know, I, I realized that she just didn't realize the scope of what she was entering, you know, the Pandora's box she had opened. And I think that that reality settled on her and it was, it was overwhelming um, and intimidating. And I felt bad because I, I wanted to, de I, want, at this, I didn't want to lie to her, you know, so I was kind of like laying it on, like, you know, this is what you're ahead for. This is what you have ahead of you. These are some of the things you're going to need to learn, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it was like that sort of that reality check. Yeah. And, you know, um, you guys are, many of you, if you're entering this field, especially during COVID, it's not just about getting the audition in clean. It's about now turning in producible or releasable audio quality, that professional quality. Um, okay, I'll say it, broadcast quality. Some of you are doing stuff for broadcast, not many. <laughs> um direct to so, broadcast yeah yeah so you know we know that it's that's a lot and so just pick your tools and your knowledge wisely um do a little research talk to other people using the same tools find out what it is that they've liked because you might be sold on a on a, on a way to learn something that might be again totally valid but it might not be the right tool set for you it might be too elaborate. It might have too much going on, too much of a learning curve. And you might be able to just by sort of follow the dots or, you know, paint by number, get something that works, but you have no clue what you just did. Yeah. And so we really want to watch out for that. I mean, Dan, what's, what are you telling people now who are being thrust into having studios and are hearing about unbelievable amounts of number of hats they have and, to and, wear. and complexity well yeah i mean I, my philosophy is always do everything you can physically to get your studio sounding right uh yeah. the idea of actually having to do production which means a number of different things it could be multi-tracking adding music i mean it's very rare that i'm asked to do that 
even though that's what I did Good. professionally for 15 years as a production yeah, director. Yeah, ironically, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, when I get to do it, it's fabulous, because I, I get right. to do that stuff. For the most part, they're looking for dry audio. Uh, and to learn how to do all this other stuff, because people think, well, if I learn how to do this, they're going to hire me for my production skills. Hardly the, the, you know, what it is. I think it's a, a matter of, when the opportunity comes and you've got to do something like that, that's when you talk to somebody who actually knows how to do it to help you and teach you step by step, do this, do that, and here's how you, you get away with that. And, you know, fake it until you make it. If you do it wrong, it's going to sound really bad. It really does take a couple of years to really master what is it supposed to sound like and how do you balance your voice with music and sound effects and all these other things? It's, it's, it's an art form. And you don't learn how to do art by taking, you know, a single sketch class. You know, yeah. there's a lot of different you know, things to do. And it takes time to understand, oh, it should sound like this. Oh, this needs to be like that. It, it, you know, and if you've worked with video, you understand what I mean. There are certain things you've got to do. And just to say, you know, well, I now I've got all the script and I can do it. Having the stuff means diddly squat if you don't know how to use it. It's not the equipment that does it. It's the actual knowledge of how it does it, when you're supposed to use it, and then how you use it. Yeah. So that's my take on that unless I went yeah. a little long on that. But I mean, we only talk to people about this every day and yeah. they're all like, what if I get this? What if I get this? Well, I could, I could use one of these. Fabulous. Yeah, I get, I get the people, I mean, there's deals with RX seven all the time. And eh. so when every time there's a deal, people say, Hey, it's only 30 and $29. Great. And then people buy it <laughs> and then they come to me and they say, we make me a stack and Oh, I have RX seven. Now are you going to include that in your stack? I'm like, no, I mean, unless there's an absolutely good reason, I'm not going to put, just because you have that tool doesn't mean I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the tools that are necessary to achieve the result. And I will never throw something in there just because you bought it. So yeah, it, yeah. That, that's not the way I operate. <laughs> exactly. Just because you got it doesn't mean you got to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we got right. a ton of questions from our vast uh, worldwide yes, audience here at Voice. Look at the chat. It's flying i know oh now you're asking all these questions well we're going to get to as many of them as we can right after these incredibly important messages you know to put it mildly this year has been challenging some voiceover talent have struggled others have thrived now if you're like me you've worked from home since long before this virus showed up but have you managed to truly master your home-based voiceover workflow? Are you easily slipping in front of the mic and efficiently turning out great work? Or are you struggling to get all your tools and systems running smoothly? Well, help is on the way. There's going to be a great new free VO Heroes course starting Saturday, August 29th called Mastering Home-Based Voiceover. And David H. Lawrence the 17th is going to teach it to you live online. You can get access to it and a reminder when it kicks off by going to voheroes.com forward slash 2020. That's voheroes.com forward slash 2020. No matter where you are on your VO journey, the free mastering home-based voiceover course will help you hone and refine your home-based workflow and help you move from struggling to thriving. Go to voheroes.com forward slash 2020. That's voheroes.com forward slash 2020. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. 
Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Well, it's time to talk about source elements. That's right. Source elements, the creators of source connect and so many other tools. Uh, it's, it is really the tool that has taken over the remote recording technology world. I mean, especially since COVID, uh, I produced a video on how to use this thing back in March because I was getting so many questions. How last time I checked, it had 16,000 views on Ooh, YouTube, which wow. I never would have predicted that ever in a million years because it's an industry tool. You know, it's something we use in voiceover. But that shows you there's a heck of a lot of interest in it because this is what the agents are telling people they need to have. Production producers are asking for it. And for good reason. It's been around longer in terms of pretty much really all the tools that work over the internet for streaming your voiceover audio to another studio. I think it's been around pretty much the longest. And uh, for that reason, it's in a lot of studios. It's really become a standard. It's taken over for ISDN pretty much. So... If you want to be ready to go, oh, I see six, four, here's what five. you're going to do. I'm you don't have to on the show pull out your for, credit card yet. We start. You can really just get a demo. You can go to source-elements.com, get, so. get a 15-day trial, and you can be up and running. It's that simple. You can be up and running and running and have Source Connect operating on your system, and then you can tell people that you have Source Connect working. Now, you don't want to get to the point where it's just working. You want to make sure it's properly set up. And to do that, check out that YouTube video I mentioned. It's at georgethetech.com slash SC. I've got a lot of information on there. Make sure you really understand how to make it work so when you need it, you're going to be ready. But it's an amazing piece of technology. And Source Connect 4 is an alpha. Very excited. I'll be testing it soon. And I'll have information to share as soon as I do. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, we appreciate your support. Let's get back to the show. We lot we got a lot of questions. Come on, let's go. Wrap it up. <laughs> and we're back. Yes, we are. We are. We now, really are now. Yeah, now you're missing it, George, because I have a new air conditioner in here. It, I'm missing the air conditioning it, that I don't hear. Yeah, it's quiet. Because it's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. It's cool in here. And awesome. You know, congratulations. It, oh yeah, it's a I big mean, deal. Yeah, it, it's amazing how how air conditioning always craps out when it's 110 degrees. Of course. So uh, it was, it, what was the old commercial? It's humping and it's a pumping until, tragically, it humps its little guts out. It's funny. My car would always die when I had to foot to the floor for five miles. It's just kind of funny how that works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, very comfortable in here now. So when people can come right back to the studio, it will be comfortable in here and it won't rain on them on the couch. Awesome. Yeah, which will be really awesome. cool. Anyway, we got a ton of questions tonight and we're happy to answer them because you've asked them. So uh, the first one is from the ACX Narrator Facebook group, a private name, someone being anonymous. Well, it's a private group and yeah. I, didn't, I didn't ask, so I just thought I would keep it anonymous. Go for it. But um, um, saying uh, the person said they got a TLM-103, but OMG, it picks up everything. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know, it sure does, doesn't it? Um, my booth is solid. It's not perfect, but it's solid. And my last mic didn't have any issue with picking up outside noise like this one is. Yeah. Um, so my question is for issues like this, should I get a different mic? Um, what mic should I get or would, I, would a better interface help somehow? Uh, I'm using a Scarlett 2i2. So I think this is another one of these people that falls victim to their agent or somebody casting saying, we prefer that you have a large diaphragm condenser like the Neumann TLM-103. And then they have no idea what it means to have a mic that's so unbelievably sensitive. And uh, it's a, it can be a real problem. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. recommend these mics and then completely forget about the acoustics of the room. The acoustics and with the TLM 103, then sound noise, the noise level, right. the self noise, or not the self noise, but the noise floor. Right. Yeah. Not on the TLM space. 103. Very quiet mic. It's a quiet, sensitive mic, and thereby also it's ex it's also extremely uh, has a very wide frequency range. So it goes way into the basement, below 20 hertz, and way above 20 kilohertz. So it hears everything. A lot of stuff that you don't want it to hear. Right. So keep well, that in mind. Can hear. Yeah. 
Yeah, not all noise is noise. Not all noise is unusable. Like if it's just rumble, your mic is hearing, and I guarantee this mic's hearing more rumble than your old one, more low end. That's not a big deal. That can be fixed with a high pass filter. So don't be too concerned. But I wouldn't just go throw the mic away or sell it quite yet. Talk to an engineer. Talk to Dan and I about is this the mic right mic for you? Getting this tech support by committee is not going to get you the right answers. Mm -mm. Believe me. Yeah, that's more that's more of a physical space question than it is a microphone question. You know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, All right. Jeff Holman yeah. asks, you guys have talked a lot about proper mic technique with a large diaphragm condenser mic, but what about a shotgun mic like the Sennheiser 416 or the Rode NTG5? What's the angle, distance, placement of the mic relative to the mouth? Well, well if you're watching the show, <laughs> let this be testament. This is the right way to do it. <laughs> so I've, I've got a Senna, or actually I have a Rode NTG4. Um, you know what? In, at the end of the day, I find that the technique is almost exactly the, the same. Same um, rules the apply. Principles, yeah, the principles are basically the same. Um, you don't want to be in the pop zone. You want to have it roughly three to six inches away. If you can be sometimes further away, that's great. 45 degree um, angle. Yeah, I mean, in this case, oftentimes I have it right down the center, but because I'm on camera, that would look pretty dumb. So... It's off to the side, but even though it's off to the side, I have it pointing right at my mouth or maybe the chin. Don't point it at your nose. You don't want nasal sounds. Um, and uh, you'll get reasonably accurate sound, very accurate sound. So, um, yeah, I think it's a very similar technique. The thing to remember with shotgun mics is the capsule with a, with a large diaphragm mic, the capsule is, you could, I don't know if you can see it on camera. Probably yeah. not, not the way the light's hitting it. But it's right inside. It's it's right where that center line is, right? And with a shotgun mic, the capsule is way back here. So when you think you're right on top of the mic, you're never really eating it the way you might think you are because you're still that far away from the capsule. So it does behave a little bit differently than a large diaphragm mic. But if you start with that same principle, I think you get really good results. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I use a four sixteen in the booth, and that's the way I have it. And you know, there's never any plosives. People forget why. Why is it that the four sixteen is so popular? Because it was designed to pick up human voices talking, and you know, from a human distance. So you know, again, the same rules will always apply. You're talking to somebody else not to a microphone. And that's one of the great things about the 416 or the NTG5 or any shotgun mic is that because you it doesn't have to be right in your field of vision and you forget the mic is there and you get to be you. There's a big psychological factor to this. So that's why I recommend, yeah. you know, the same techniques, you know, five to seven inches, depending on the size of the room, you know, this say way or a fist or whatever, but you don't talk directly into the diaphragm unless you're like doing promo work, in which case. Yeah, unless you're you, doing promo work, that's but right. you're still going to uh, pop the mic. That's right. You know, or, or you get a pop filter for it. But, you know, I, f I find seeing a, a windscreen on something where it's nowhere near the person. I'm like, are you recording outside? You know, unless a Santa Ana is coming through, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're not yes, I had mine on my mic for a long time. I, it's a weird crutch. I don't know why I did it, but you definitely don't it need it. It looks cool. Technique. <laughs> it looks really uh, professional, but nobody cares how the sausage is made. They only care about what it sounds like. Right. You get the next question. Okay. Our buddy Thomas Machen asks, how much space do you need to not have a U87 Sound like it's trapped in a box. Don't record Oof. in a box. <laughs> so I have heard a U87 sound good in a smallish booth, like a four by six. Um, getting it exactly right in the right place in the room is very critical. Tuning the room is correct is very critical. I think you can get away with a space that small if you have the room tuned correctly. Um, the one particular studio that really stood out they, they were using GIK acoustics uh, products and they were using some diffusers. And that's something I haven't had time or the inclination yet to really spend time experimenting with is diffusers. But basically on either side of the, the, the two short walls, well, the long walls, which are the closest to you, 
on either side of the mic, there was a diffuser. So whatever reflections would come off those walls was sort of more scattered than it was directed back at the mic. In that case, it sounded really good. I also found that just putting the mic in figure eight mode takes care of a lot of sins because then the microphone doesn't hear the, it's, let's assume you have the mic again, sort of straight up and down or like this, the mic doesn't hear what's above it or below it or on either side of it. So if you have a room that has less than perfect acoustics, the mic's going to hear less of it. It's still going to hear what's behind it, but then you just focus a lot of the treatment on the wall behind the mic, you know, big bass trap, things like that. But you can get away with a less than ideal room when the mic's in figure eight. That's been my experience after experimenting and having people try this. So, um, but I don't know how much space exactly. I definitely wouldn't shove it in a three and a half by three and a half whisper room. No. Definitely wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. I mean, what do you need a U87 for anyway? Unless you really like having a great mic, but you have a great mic. A U87 is not designed to be in a small booth like that. It's designed to be in an acoustically sterile and neutral environment that is very expensive. That's where you put a $3,000 microphone, not in a phone box. Or it's used yeah. for a concert concert recording concert right. halls uh, exactly drum over it drum far distance microphone placement if you look in some recording magazines you'll see people describe well i've got a pair of u87s 10 feet from the drums things like that those mics excel at that but i think they're used so commonly in voiceover they just became a utility mic they didn't know what mic maybe to use per se but they knew this was one of the most expensive respected mics in the studio so if they put that one up well, it's going to make you know, a difference. Their yeah. boss isn't going to chew them out. Why'd you use such a crap <laughs> mic, you know, on the celebrity guy? Use the $3,000, you know, bring out the most expensive machine. And the one that goes, bing! <laughs> See if you get that reference. Um, <laughs> um, okay, more. Okay. Jay Horse Black. Yeah. This one, I guess, one's for me, too. Um, you, yeah. The small round circle pop screen thing that you sometimes have on your 416. I don't have a 416 and I don't have a round pop screen thing. Is this maybe what he's talking about? Well, this, you, this you is my only little round there. pop screen thing. Oh, yeah. That the, Remember uh, that? The Hook Studio one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, he says, where can we get those? Is this what I'm looking for? And he sent me a link and I'm clicking on it and I'm looking at it and it is loading and does he still make these see i got mine too <laughs> the hooks he's not i don't think he's making this exact one still because it was made for the apogee mic specifically it was and unfortunately it was for the old original apogee mic and they've changed the design now so it doesn't really work on the new ones yeah. Yeah. It's a bummer. does it really work as a pop screen though i mean it, it does should. actually work pretty well peter piper pop picked screen. a pack of pickle pepper yeah well you know what it's good for it's a good spit guard yeah, because which is it's really a, what they're for. It keeps spit off your mic. Um, anyway, he showed me one that's for an RE20 or an RE320. It's sort of like a ring that goes around the mic and it has a disc in front of it. Um, that's not the one. That's a, that's for an RE20. But look for the Hook Studios. And weirdly, I think he only sells them on eBay. Mm. I'm pretty sure about that. So look on eBay for the Hook Studios pop screens and you'll find you'll probably find the one you're looking for i think that's what might be what you're referring to yeah fun with 3d printers yes okay next ah the john hardy gear well we were just discussing this earlier about uh you know uh, there's a lot of edicts coming down about you gotta have this mic and you gotta have that and and again these guys these these engineers who are sending out these specs to voice actors don't talk about acoustics. Yeah. So all of these, you know, something that's going to make a good mic extremely sensitive doesn't do you any good if you're in a marginally good closet. You know, so yeah, we, we, we haven't, we don't get to, as if you, as you, as you probably know from watching the show, um, we do talk about a lot of gear, but we don't get too gear slutty. Um, <laughs> meaning why should we, we don't, compare our shades of mauve all that much on the show we're not going to be probably comparing john hardy to grace design to avalon etc 
and analyzing these preamp colors because we know that in our in the context of our world that is like sixth or seventh on the list in terms of influencing the sound quality it is so far down the list yeah john hardy's preamp extremely well regarded my friend bo weaver used to use one now he has a scarlet solo i think <laughs> i'm not kidding <laughs> yeah and he uses he, twisted he, wave i mean he has reducted and reducted and reducted his studio over the years i mean it's you think it's hilarious he used to have the most pretty well elaborate setup it's literally a 416 into a scarlet which is that's the way it. it should be and that's the but a john it. hardy is a fantastic preamp if you had a thousand dollars and you just want that one cool piece of gear that you've always been Go for it, man. It's simple. It's the nice thing about it. Turn it on, it has a gain knob. That's Ooh. what's nice about it. Yeah. It's not a crazy channel strip with a million controls, but. Yeah. But of course, uh, it means nothing if you can't perform your way out of a paper bag. Yeah. So. I, I don't have any. I know in the context of what he might be talking about, it's a different situation. But if you're going to have a studio for commercial use and you want to have seven preamps, that might be one of them. Yeah. I think we got. Oh, time I know we're running out of time real fast. Yeah, we've Dan, got time we for maybe one or next. two questions here. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam uh, Dergeman, who's joining us from the UK, so he's up really late. Um, I have been curious about the Apollo solo for PC. However, the driver inconsistencies are making me shy away. Well, aside from the price tag too. Well, I think he answered yeah. his own question there. Yeah, I mean, watch our <laughs> episode. Type, go to YouTube. Type in VOBS USB interface shootout. Every time someone says which interface to get, I just send them that video. It just shows you how little the differences are from $100 to $700. And that, you know, you can, as I just got done saying, use something as simple and easy as a Scarlet and get completely high quality pro voiceover recordings. So don't obsess about it. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem is we find and, you know, and George and I talk to people every day because that's our job um to talk to them about their home voiceover studios and we're constantly getting this flow of what about this piece of equipment what about that piece of equipment um it's like you know we're, we have experience with all of them if something has problems with you know technologically wise and it's going to be more of a problem than a benefit we're usually saying mm -hmm. you know that one's going to be a problem keep it super duper simple uh yep. which is why you know Bo Weaver uses a 416 into a, and he still sounds like Bo Weaver. It doesn't, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, we're finding that if the more stuff you have, the more clouded it actually is going to create your audio. Many times somebody wrote to me today and said they're using a, a manly preamp and it's like, wow, that looks really cool, but he's feeding it into a 4i4, a Scarlet 4i4. I'm like, what? take it out of the chain for a second it may sound a whole heck of a lot cleaner. Do an AV convert. Yeah, do an AV comparison. And and when you're going to use a preamp at that price point, that quality, everything else needs to be cons consummate in terms of quality. Right. The, the acoustics. You know, the AV converters, right. everything. Your room noise, your room tone, everything. Otherwise, what a waste of money. Yeah. Oh, oh it's amazing. You, you walk into somebody's studio, you unplug everything, and you plug it in, you know, all right, now talk into it. It's like. God, well, that sounds Adam great. Adam Dergeman has another question here. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I'm not, I don't... I'm sorry. I just feel like it's one we've answered so many times, Adam, and I, I don't... I mean, we like to answer your questions, but it answers itself practically. You're saying, well, I got this, then I added this, but then the noise got worse. He was actually saying, yeah, I have an audience ID4, and I'm, it's weird that I have to turn the gain up on the preamp so high. Yeah because guys if it sounds good it is good like if you've got a good mic plugged into the audio id4 and you're getting good noise levels the, the distortion is low everything sounds great don't add stuff just because you think the knob is in a weird spot <laughs> it doesn't matter the audio id4 does have a weird gain control we've talked about it before that yeah you have to have it at the last 15 to 10 10 percent of its gain range and we understand that's a little odd yeah. But adding more gear to take away the clarity and the accuracy of the preamp makes doesn't make sense. So yeah. don't add a fet head, don't add any boosters, cloud lifters, anything. Exactly. Just keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it clean. Yeah. Well, for some reason you've decided to spend another hour with us and listen to George and I <laughs> ramble on about home voiceover studio stuff. But apparently you love it because we love it. 
We do. We do. We do. I get a big boost every time this part of the show comes up, and I, I really enjoy it. So Yeah, me too. Hopefully I mean, you guys found something useful from tonight. It's the only time we get a chance to talk, because we're, we're sequestered away. Anyway, we'll be right yeah. back to wrap things up right after these. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Hey, you know, it's not often we get to hang out in the Voice Over Body Shop office, home of the Voice Over Body Shop Broadcast Museum and Time Wasting Hobby Museum. Anyway, we're here to talk about Harlan Hogan and Voice Over Essentials. Right now, the Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones, together with the wonderful LED full color Voice Over Recording sign, are on special right now at 20 bucks off. No promo code required. Just put both items in your Voice Over Essentials shopping cart. The headphones. They're specially designed for voiceover with a nice flat response that allows you to hear you as you exist. And the LED voiceover recording sign is the perfect way to keep everyone around you quiet while you ply your craft. That's 20 bucks off when you buy both. No promo code required. Just put both items in your voiceover essentials shopping cart. Go over to voiceover essentials right now and see all the great stuff they have. Thanks, Harlan. As a voice talent, you have to have a website, but what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control, and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that time of the show when we get to say goodbye. You know, now it's time to say goodbye to all our family and thank them, uh, especially uh, our donors of the week, who are. Oh, I get to I get a second take on this name now. This is here we go. Okay. First, and my dad, action. George Whittem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second of all, Natasha Morchevka, Thomas Pinto, Trey Mosley, Philip Sapir, Paul Pape. Hey, Paul Pape. Paul Christopher Pape. Epperson. Hi. Uh, Michelle Blanker, Antland Productions, and Graham Spicer. All right. Thank you, you know, for those donations. Yes. We, of course, we've been here in the marvelous uh, VOBS Central Studio here where you can see all the VO staff. The VOBS staff is up there. You know, there's Jeff <laughs> Holman right there, and and Sue's over here somewhere. We want Everybody's to go back. social distance with masks on. <laughs> yeah, it, we we can't wait till this is over so we can go back to showing people studios, and then George and I can uh, be in other people's studios, which we think is is really good. So send them to us, and we're starting to accumulate a few, so we can we can have a few. Uh, we do need to thank our amazing sponsors, though, uh, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Voiceover Extra. Source Elements. 
boheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and jmc demos and of course jeff holman doing a great job getting all those questions to us from the chat rooms uh sumerlino getting it done behind the board yes. and uh she does a great job every week and that's why she's here and lee penny for being lee penny <laughs> well i think we're going to take a couple of weeks off because we've only put together a show every week since this whole thing started. You guys get fresh content, but I'm going to pick two good shows, a great interview, and a really good tech talk for the week after that. And then we'll return live with some fresh content a little bit later in September. We'll all be fresh. Yes. We'll get past the Jewish holidays, which can just... Yeah totally throw things into chaos need refreshment and uh yeah so we can concentrate and you know and, and get things better but we appreciate you and all your all your views and all your emails and all your questions and uh you know yes we do this thing is going to end sooner or later and we're all going to get together again we get the chance to hug and shake hands and not just bump elbows and talk to each other from six feet and uh, yeah Anyway, but Looking forward to it. it's important to note that, you know, your audio is very important to us and to you, but mostly, mostly if it sounds good, it is good. And that's the bottom line, kiddos. Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem and this is voiceover body shop or VO BS. BS. Have a great week. Have a great September. We'll see you a little bit later. See you in September. Have a good one.